Alhamdulillah, shukrulillah, that um, I think a lot has been said, mashallah, tonight, and so we might be replete with all of this benefit. So I just, uh, you know, perhaps will share a short reflection with the permission of Allah Ta'ala that the title of tonight's talk was The Guiding Light. The Guiding Light. And, you know, this is a description of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qadi Iyad mentions in his Shifa that there are uh, different tafsirs, tafasir of certain verses of the Quran that allude to light. So, for example, Surah Al Tariq, Was Sama'i Wa Tariq, Wa Ma Adarakim Al Tariq, An Najm Al Thaqib, that Allah Ta'ala swears by the sky and the night visitor, and what can make you understand the night visitor, the Tariq? The description, the answer is An Najm Al Thaqib, this penetrating star, the star that's light is so intense that it pierces through darkness. Thaqab in the Arabic language means to penetrate a pearl, to, to drill a hole in a pearl. And so thaqib is, it, the light is so intense that it goes through all darkness. So the standard tafsir of this are, are the sky, uh, stars in the sky. But Qadir Iyad cites one of the early Imams, Imam Sulami, as saying that the Najm al Thaqib is Sayyidina Muhammad. That when there's darkness in the world, the darkness of ignorance of the divine, then his blessed light penetrates through all that darkness and brings the light of Tawheed, the light of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And in that light, Qadir Iyad also mentions that the tafsir of the surah that with the name An Najm, when Najmi ida hawa ma dalla sahibukum wa ma gawa wa ma yantiqa an al hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha, this sublime surah that discusses it describes revelation itself, and it describes the beautiful night journey, the Isra wal Mi'raj of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah Taala swears by the star when it sets, when Najmi ida hawa and then describes the state of our Prophet ﷺ, perfect guidance. مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ He was not astray ﷺ. وَمَا غَوَى He did not deviate. وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He does not speak of his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى It's but revelation revealed. That what is the star that Allah swears by to begin the surah? And again, Qadiyyad says there's different tafasir. The majority say it's the stars in the sky. But some said it's the Qur'an because it comes nujuman in stages. It was revealed in stages. So that's another tafsir. But he cites Imam Ja'far ibn, ibn Muhammad, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq rahimahullah ta'ala, the great Imam of the Sunnis, the Shaykh of Imam Malik and Abu Hanifa and others. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq rahimahullah ta'ala said that the Najm here is Qalb Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It is the heart, the blessed, sublime, luminous heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah Ta'ala is swearing by this beautiful heart when Najmi Ida Hawa and then what does Hawa mean in this context? The commentator Mullah Ali Al Qari Rahimullah Ta'ala he says that it is the manifestation of the Prophet in the world, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says that perhaps it could also mean that this sublime heart, its inclination towards Allah Ta'ala, and it's the fact that it is never uh it is, it is absent, it is never present, it is always absent from other than Allah. The ghaybatihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an al that he is absent-minded from other than Allah. He is always witnessing his Lord sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa fi hubbihi, and the fact that this blessed heart is immersed in the love of God, the love of Allah Ta'ala. And this is what the first thing Ibn Ishaq relates that the first khutbah the Prophet gave before entering Medina Munawwara, when traveling from Quba on the outskirts on the day of Jum'ah, his Jum'ah khutbah that day, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amongst the things that he said in that khutbah, Ahibbu ma ahabbullah wa ahibbullah min kulli qulubikum. This istighraq, this immersion of his blessed heart was one of the first teachings to plant the seed of Medina that he said, love everything that Allah loves and love Allah from the bottom of your hearts. وَأَحِبُّ اللَّهَ مِنْ كُلِّ قُلُوبِكُمْ This was his blessed heart, the, the most immersed in the love of Allah Ta'ala Wasallam, and he's teaching it to plant the seeds of Medina. And so this is the Najm, Wallahu Alam. It's amazing. 
And this beautiful, luminous guidance that was the greatest blessing to creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was foretold in the early scriptures. Foretold in the early scriptures. And Imam Bukhari relates in his Sahih, as well in his, in his Adab al-Mufrad, and Ahmad in his Mustad, rahimahullah, that one of the early tabi'een, Ata ibn Yasar, he was the mawla of Maymuna, our mother, Allah be pleased with them. He went to the companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As and asked him, can you give me a description of Allah's messenger? And our beloved brother, Dr. Ali Atai is here. I'm shy to say because it's going to cite the Torah and he could probably give a profound exposition of this hadith. So with his permission, inshallah, that the noble companion Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As said, Ajal. Wallahi innahu la mawsufun fi Torah bi ba'di sifatihi fi Quran. He says, absolutely. By Allah, he is described in the Torah with some of the, his blessed description in the Quran. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhan nabi, inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. Just like Surah Al-Fatih. Oh, blessed Prophet, we have sent you as a witness and a, a, a gospel, the bringer, of, the bringer of glad tidings and a warner, and a sanctuary and a guardian for the unlettered. And perhaps in that context of the Torah, it meant the Gentiles. Anta abdi wa rasuli. Look at the wording. Anta abdi wa rasuli. You are my servant and my messenger. Allah Ta'ala claims the Prophet for himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just like with Nabi Musa, وَاسْتَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي I have preferred you for me. So too with the best of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَنْتَ abdi wa rasuli, As Allah Ta'ala ascribes the Prophet to him in the maqam of ubudiyah in the Qur'an, سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ الْكِتَابِ وَلَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Allah Ta'ala ascribes the, the Prophet as Abd to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Qur'an. And the Mufassirin say this is the greatest description of the Prophet in the Qur'an. Anta abdi wa rasuli sammaituka al-mutawakkil. And reflect on this principle. I have named you al-mutawakkil. I have named you the one who relies on Allah par excellence, the quintessential relier on the divine. And this is the lens by which we can understand the entire seerah from beginning to end. Sammaituka al-mutawakkil. I have named you the one that relies on Allah with perfection. And the beautiful hadith continues. Laysa bi fadlin wala ghalid. He was neither harsh, nor coarse, nor rough. Wala sakhabin bil aswaq. He did not shout in the marketplace. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا يَجْزِي بِسَيَّةَ سَيَّةَ وَلَكِنْ يَعْفُوا وَيَسْفَحْ And he never repelled an evil with another evil, but rather he forgave and overlooked. وَلَا يَقْبِضُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَتَّى يُقِيمَ بِهِ الْمِلَّةَ الْعَوْجَاءِ And Allah will not take him in death until Allah Ta'ala, through him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, makes upright the crooked nation. Reflect on Arabia before Islam, and then after this beautiful najm, alighted, landed in the Arabian Peninsula and guided the entire, all of Arabia to Tawheed to produce over 100,000 saints by the time of his passing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bi an yaqulu la ilaha illallah That Allah will not take him until he rectifies the crooked nation by their saying, la ilaha illallah. Wa yaftah bihi a'yunan umya وَآذَانٌ سُمَّا وَقُلُومٌ غُلْفَةٌ And until Allah opens through him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, blind eyes, deaf hearing, and hearts that are veiled. Hearts that are veiled. And again, we go back to the tafsir of Imam Ja'far, that the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was never veiled for a moment. So then how do we understand the hadith in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, explaining why he makes istighfar. We know he asked forgiveness from Allah 100 times a day, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Sahih Muslim, in Abu Dawood, the reason he said, إِنَّهُ لَيُغَانُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِي That sometimes there's like a haziness over my heart. غَيْن Sometimes there's a haziness over my heart. فَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمْ مِئَةَ مَرَّةَ So I seek forgiveness from Allah 100 times. One of the great Imams of our tradition, Abu al-Hasan al-Shadri, rahimahullah, he was confused by this hadith. What could this haziness be on the best heart of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he had a dream once and he saw the best of creation. He saw the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet said to him, Ya Mubarak, O oh, blessed one, 
O oh, blessed one, innahu ghayn al-anwar, la ghayn al-aghyar. It is a haziness of multiple layers of illumination, deeper knowledge of the divine, not a haziness of distraction from the divine. Not a haziness of distraction from the divine. So even his haziness was more illumination. What kind of sublime heart is this? Subhanallah. And yet from the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, from the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, returning to this principle of tawakkul, we see how very human he was in his perfection. And we'll just conclude with this point that this luminous sublime heart was in the world, fully in the world, yet fully with his Lord, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he experienced difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. And you open any chapter of the Blessed Seerah, even the chapter of the greatest fat like Badr, Badr al-Kubra. But what was the news when he returned back to Medina? They had just buried Ruqayya, alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah. That you open any chapter of the Seerah, and, and you, you find tragedy, you find difficulty. And we all, we all have to think, you know, we're all facing our own hardships right now. We're all facing our own hardships right now. And that struggle can be overwhelming at times. And the key is the luminosity of the Prophet's heart, the knowledge of Allah Ta'ala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that his heart was always knowing Allah. Sammaituka al-mutawakkil. One of the shaykhs, Shaykh Mustafa al-Arusi, the shaykh of Azhar in the 1800s, he says, Ialam an mutawakkil man yara al haq azza wa jal fi suwar al asbab. Realize that the mutawakkil is the one that recognizes his Lord in the forms of created things. Fa'il al mukhtar al nijami al ashya al liti yansibuha al mahjubun ilayha. That recognizes Allah as the true doer of every moment and the one that eternally willed every moment. That the people veiled only ascribe back to the causes in the world. So such a person of tawakkul gives the entire affair to the one who already owns the affair and is pleased and content with him as his wakil. That's the mutawakkil. That's the mutawakkil. And the Prophet is the imam of this sallam. And so go then reflect on the, the time of ta'if in the year in which he lost his beloved wife, our mother Khadija radiallahu anha, the one that Ibn Ishaq says that kanat lahu wazira sitqin ala al-Islam, that she was the deputy, the minister that supported him from day one throughout Islam, and that he also lost Abu Talib. So the, the, the internal comfort in the home and the external political protector in the world, he loses both, and then he goes to Ta'if sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the children and and slaves stone him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he sits down and he gives a dua that shows his perfect humanity in the context of his perfect tawakkul. His perfect humanity in the context of his perfect tawakkul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Shaykh Abdul Hakim Murad says this prayer is infinitely human. This dua is infinitely human. Yet he is fully knowledgeable of the infinite, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati wa qilla tahilati wa hawani ala al-nas. Ya arham al-rahimin, anta rabbul mustad'afin, wa anta rabbi, ila man takiruni, ila ba'idin yatajahamani, aw ila aduin malaktahu amri. In lam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali, walakin aafiyatuka hiya aw sa'ali, a'udhu bi nuri wajika alladhi ashraqat lahu al-dhunamat, wa saluha alayhi min amri al-dunya wa al-akhira, min an yanzila bi ghadabuk, aw yahilla bihi sakhatuk, yahilla bi sakhatuk, laka al-utbah hatta turda, wa la hawla wa la quwta illa bik. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this sublime, infinitely human prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Allah, to you alone do I complain of my weakness, and the paucity of my resources and my loneliness before man. O oh, most merciful of those who show mercy, you are the Lord of the weak and you are my Lord. Just like in the Torah it says, Anta abdi wa rasuli, you are my slave and my rasul. So the, what does the Prophet say? You are my Lord, Ya Allah. To whom will you entrust me? To some far off stranger that will abuse me or to an enemy that you have given him control over me? So long as you are not angry with me, then I do not mind. So long as you are not angry with me, then I do not mind. None of these difficulties. 
I have no complaint about the difficulty. I complain to you about my own need for you. Al iftiqaru ila Allah. Al iftiqaru ila Allah. I need you, Ya Allah. This is what he is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Walakin afiyatikhi awsali. But your well, the well-being and safety and health and and goodness from you, it gives me more room to operate. Awsauli. I seek refuge in the light of your countenance. The light of the Prophet's heart is because of the light of Allah Ta'ala directly. I seek refuge in the light of your countenance, by which all darknesses are effaced and removed, and by which every single thing in this life and the next is made right. Lest your anger, anger descend on me or your wrath come upon me, you have the right to blame until you are satisfied. Ya Allah, wala hawla wala quwwata illa bik, and there is no might or power except for you. And this is the dhikr that is ghirasul jannah. It is the grass of paradise. La hawla wala quwwata illa billah. That whatever we are facing, we imbue this dua and imbue this dhikr in facing that trial. And inshallah, we'll be illumined, illumined with some of the luminosity of the Blessed Prophet وسلم, from the Divine Himself. We ask Allah Ta'ala to relieve all of our difficulties and to grant us afia tamma mu'afa tamma fi dunya wal akhirah. Complete well being in this life and the next, which begins with yaqeen, absolute certitude in Allah Ta'ala and His Majesty and the fact that He controls every atom in the universe. Wa salli la humma rasidra Muhammad al Nabi rumi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Barakallahu fiqh.